Welcome back. Let's talk about World Water Day because that's what the world marks on uh, the 22nd of March every year. But in Ghana, how are we marking the day in spite of uh, the global theme of nature for water, how to explore, how to use our nature to improve water? I've been joined by Mohammed Abdul Nasir, a country director for Water Aid, and Ata Ahin, he is the vice president of Coalition of NGOs in Water and Sanitation. Gentlemen, welcome and good morning to you. Uh, happy World Water Day to all of us. <laughs> I say, see, I took a sip already. But we keep celebrating this every year. Has it been beneficial? Start where you are him. Yes, of course. Um, thank you very much. First of all, let me say good morning to your viewers. Mm. Um, you know, World Water Day was instituted, as it were, to draw attention to the importance of access to safe water. Mm. Um, not only for consumption, but also for development. Right. And so, just by the fact that we have been able to create this awareness, we have been able to instill the sense of um, awareness in people, I think to that extent, it has been very beneficial. Mm. Yes, and, and we've been able to draw attention mm. for government to know the people who don't have access to safe water, and action is being taken. So I think that by and large we are getting there. Mohammed, is awareness enough? Is that all we demand? No, uh, uh, I mean, awareness is just a starting point. Right. But uh, there's more action required from uh, policy makers, mm. uh, decision makers, and also from citizens. Mm. And until we get the two different or three different segments mm. working together, mm. awareness will never be enough. Mm. You know, policies will have to be implemented. Right. And we also need to ensure that where practices need to change, that indeed they change, especially with consumers of water. I'll show you some clip of how people are don't have access to water. Some are drinking uh, something close to coffee, uh, you know, coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not coffee, it's water. Yeah. That's the only water that they have. But this year's theme says we're using nature to improve water. How does it pan out in this country called Ghana? Mo? Yeah, I think it's... Uh we're used to the typical way of providing water, do right. a borehole, provide a mechanized system among those, those, mm. those options, mm. but that's not sufficient. Mm. Well, this year's theme is uh, deliberately chosen, in the nature for water, implying that the answers to the challenges with water right. can be found in nature. Mm. But it's very difficult for us to, 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 to deal with that. If you go to a typical community okay. where farming is the main subsistence, mm -hmm. You know, people farm along uh, water bodies, they seal to water bodies, mm -hmm. and nothing happens. Right. You know, that needs to change. You know, when we even over-extract, we affect the recharge, mm. and nobody controls that, mm. or it is not properly regulated. So that I, is another I have seen a, a growing trend, and a, a growing trend, a worrying one indeed. You mentioned boreholes, mm. and these days, people will merely invite anybody to dig for them a borehole. Uh, whether the, the, the base is good, mm. is not mm. good, whether it's contaminated, is not contaminated, does it scare you? It does. Um, first of all, we have to appreciate the science mm. of the water recharge. And it's not everywhere that you can drill. But there are people who go to anywhere and they start drilling without even mm. doing what we call the geophysics hydrogeological surveys, investigations. Mm. Mm. Apart from that, you know, sometimes after drilling, even the water doesn't go through water quality analysis mm. to be able to determine that the water is safe for human consumption. As soon as they drill, they put the hand pump or the submersible pump on it, and then they start, I mean, fetching and drinking. Mm. It's worrying, and I think there should be regulation right. around that. Otherwise, we'll be serving people with contaminated well, we'll talk water. More about right in the heart of the capital city, close to the Flagstaff House, the seat of government, where the president himself resides, the most important man, who also has his private residence somewhere around that enclave. Two slums, Nima and Mamobi, have their own set of challenges. Take a look at slums in the city, the much-awaited jaw-dropping Community Connect documentary, uh, and uh, it's right on your screens at this point. Filth, despair, neglect, deterioration, ticking time bomb. 
These words perfectly describes the current situation of the twin slums of Nima and Mamubi, arguably two of the most famous Zango communities in Ghana. Their story is not a pleasant one even in the 21st century. Nima presents a jaw-dropping view of a packed, decrepit, haphazard and unplanned housing units inhabited by impoverished people. Their needs are enormous, but the insufficient supply of shelter, water, electricity, employment, security, and good drainage system tops the wish list. These conditions have persisted since the early days, but haven't impeded her daily expansion. So, she continues to play host to a large number of rural urban migrants from Ghana and parts of West Africa in an overwhelming fashion. Culture, religion, and tribal unity and diversity presents a delightful example of peaceful coexistence in the midst of all the skiller. Nima and Mamobi are strategically placed in close proximity to the Flagstaff House, the seat of government. In fact, Ghana's president, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, has repeatedly mentioned how he was raised in this vicinity and how he still keeps his Nima residence. But right in the center of these two communities lies the infamous Nima Gata project that serves as a boundary for the Ayawaso East and North constituencies. It travels about 1.2 kilometers from the Kaukudi Junction near the Kanda Highway all the way down into the Mamobi 441 Township. The Alahandu Gata, as it's also called, was initiated at the advent of the Atamils government to ensure the smooth flow of wastewater and improve sanitation. Unfortunately, it now poses a threat to the lives of those that live near it. The project was earlier handled by Caspian Energy Ghana Limited, but it stalled twice between 2013 and 2015 after missing an initial 2012 completion deadline due to financial constraints, lack of resources, and the political will to see it through. It was later re-awarded to Queiroz Calvaro, the Brazilian construction company that put together the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Interchange. Their deadline was set for a period of two years between 2015 and 2017. Yet, in 2018, there has been next to no improvement and the story remains the same. Here is Kosami, a local government activist. What is happening there is lack of commitment in dealing with the issue confronting the, 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 the community. Uh, it seems the gutter was contracted five, some years back, in the 90s. So, why can't we find a way of completing it so that water can flow properly? into the, 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 main, the main drain. Presently, the sides of the drain are heavily choked with a carpet of waste, from human excreta and polythene bags to bottles and organic waste. The list is endless. In addition to wastewater from the households that meander through the alleyways to the end of the abundant project, growing from stagnant to gapping stench and serving as a fertile breeding ground for mosquitoes, rodents and cockroaches, the health implications need no explanation. There are also reported cases of homes being ruined by the floods. Structures built along the now uncompleted drain are suffering from cracks and are on the verge of collapse as erosion is gradually eating away the foundation of their shelter. Some residents have abandoned their homes for their own safety, but others remain adamant determined to stay on. They toss in refuse behind their homes to fight erosion, which seems to be winning against their homes, hanging on the balance. Children and adults use this abandoned project as a walkway to and from work and school. Particularly, the children find pleasure in watching cattle, sheep and goats reared on the sides in makeshift pens and ranches. With the livestock having a field day and feeding on just anything, the children run their own commentary over the Food and Drug Authority's silence to make the pastime worth the while. The Community Connect team was told how children have often fallen into the drain and gotten badly injured. Mazu is brother to Sunday, who lost his life after falling into the Alhamdu Gata. He explains. 
He died in the gutter. He was walking on the gutter when he suddenly fell inside and he broke the leg. Before we got him, we took him to the hospital and we lost him. Business is booming on the Nima gutter. Brisk business obtains, despite the gapping stench. The plot thickens as food and other commodities are served on the platform of filth with careless abandon. Rakia sells a popular delicacy, Koko and Kosi. She shares the rationale behind this idea. Okay. Previously, this place did not look presentable to me for a food joint. But the boys that hang out around here mounted pressure on me to start this business so they can buy some. Initially, I did not feel comfortable selling food here. But now, I have gotten used to the smell and danger. They buy from me and some residents also patronize my eatery. I use mosquito quail to ward off flies and other insects. With the predictions of heavy rains by the Ghana Meteorological Agency, residents now fear for their lives and property due to the fact that even well thought out communities are not spared the wrath of the rains. Maestro claims the first phase of the Mamobi drain was completed by the state construction company in 1999. However, the second phase, which traveled from Kaukudi Junction to Mamobi Bridge, seems to be going nowhere. It appears that Mamobi and Nima are sitting on a ticking time bomb. This is so because, after many years of sadness and doubt, the promises from officialdom to complete the project has just been nothing but words, making the lines of hope badly blurred. He is believing. Today, the media general is here, the community connect is here. Johnny, I salute you. The whole world have to see this thing so that we are saying that the life of people of Mamobi Nima is very important. If they don't do this thing and any, if it rains in the midnight, what will happen? People will not like it. In 2013, some angry youth of the area issued an ultimatum to the government of the day to either complete the project and wipe away their symbol of disgrace or face multiple demonstrations. That, indeed, yielded close to nothing. It is true that water is a prized commodity, but must it be fetched from any source despite the consequences? But when a bust pipe profusely wastes clean, potable water, it becomes very worrying and the questions start popping up in your mind. And if indeed cleanliness is rarely next to godliness, as they say, will God like to dwell in this mess at Nima and Mamubi? This is the lowest point of a project that raised the hopes of the people of Mamubi and Nima so high. And with the rains fast approaching, their physical and medical threats heighten. Who do they look up to? What could they possibly hope for? And who do they turn to for help? Who will fix this mess here at Nima and Mamobi for Community Connect? This is Johnny Hughes reporting from Nima and Mamobi. <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I want to weep. I don't know what's on your mind. I'll start with you, uh, Mohammed. What's on your mind? Uh, really very sad about what I've just seen. Again, uh, when you see situations like this, three things are not working. Tell me. Environmental protection not working, institutions not working, policies not working. Just three things are, are our biggest challenges. Ten years, the drain yes. has been under construction. Absolutely. And it's been, uh, the contract has been awarded, re-awarded close to four times already. Ahin, <laughs> water and sanitation, you are the NGOs. And I'm happy you have linked this, I mean, to World Water Day. Right. You know, you can provide people with safe water, but if their sanitation is this bad, you will not address their health I mean, issues. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you wonder why we know what to do. We have all the policies, like he said, but they are not working. We are not implementing them. Um, if you are able to address your sanitation, mm -hmm. you address your health, you address your education, you address I mean, people's ability to come out of poverty. So I find it quite difficult why we have not been able to address the issue of sanitation in this country. It's mind-boggling. The president says see in four years... Mm -hmm. in this situation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the, the president said in four moment. years, uh, the city of Accra will be the cleanest yes. in, in Africa. 
Do you still believe that agenda is on course? Because this <laughs> is in close proximity to the Flagstaff House, Absolutely. to the President's private residence. And the gutter is it's just left with about some 10% of the close. thing to be, yes. to be completed. Yeah, I, I think first and, and foremost, left there. Our, our image as a, a lower middle income country is being questioned. Yeah. You know, if you have situations like this, right. visible to foreigners, visible to indigents, among others. Two, if you look at the health implications of what we've just seen, right. it's quite serious to very poor, unsuspecting citizens. You go and fetch water in areas like that. The water is clearly polluted. Yeah, you know, they are yeah. going to begin to have health challenges, and their meager income will be spent on health costs. Mm -hmm. That's another one. The third is in terms of uh, how we're moving as a country towards achieving this cleanest country uh, ambition. Right. One is financing. Government in the uh, 2018 budget mm -hmm. put in 183.6 million for the water and sanitation sector. Right. Woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. If you turn that into dollar terms, we're looking at. Uh, about $42 million, mm. when the sector needs a minimum of $500 million mm. that's failed. In the State of the Nation address, where the president re-echoed his dream of making Accra the cleaner city, right. he further allocated $200 million more Ghana cities mm. to deal with the sanitation challenge. Right. If you convert that, we're looking at 43 to $45 million. Again, woefully inadequate. Mm. So in financing terms, we need to raise our game. But we, we don't have the money, do we? we? I think we do. We do. We have okay. the money. As a lower middle income country, we're extracting minerals. In fact, uh, annually, we're supposed to make a, million, uh, a minimum of about $900 million mm. in the extractive industry alone. Why can't we dedicate even, 20, let's say, 3% of that mm. to wash, water sanitation and hygiene? will make significant progress. Look into that camera, and maybe you want to speak to the president. He lives close by, so he can get to fix this. And then, Ayin, you have a chance to tell the president as well what you've seen yeah, and heard. I, 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 I'm very sad as a Ghanaian, to begin with. Two, as a leader in the water sector, I'm very disappointed in the institutions that we work with. And three, I think, uh, President, you have uh, very good ideals. You have made very strong commitments. Mm. But I think you need to make sure that the institutions that are expected to deliver these services actually do so. And if they don't, use it as a performance measure and either make some changes mm. or yeah, tell them that they're not the right people in, mm. in the right seats. Ian, should a sanitation minister be touched? And, and in doing that, will there be an ultimatum from those of you, it's, NGOs in water and sanitation? It's a, it's a difficult situation. You know, that ministry, right from the beginning, is set out to find difficulties. Um, the ministry is supposed to work with other ministries to be able to achieve results. And so I will not blame the minister, but I think that there should be that intersectoral collaboration to be able to address our situation. When the president said that he wanted to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa, well, mm. I have said that it's going to be very, very difficult, if mm. not impossible, by 2020. About the Alhamdu Gata, are you putting an ultimatum on it for the president? You want to tell him something? Well, I think or that... the minister for sanitation? I think that citizens will have to speak, and we have spoken. And I think that it is time for action. Mm. We cannot continue to live in a country where people are staying in situations like this. I, I think the and media mm. needs to play needs to very strong. Right. And that's what we're yes. doing here on TV3. Exactly. Yeah. I, thank you. I thank you very much. Mohamed Abdul uh, Nasir, Country Director of Water Aid. Grateful for your time and grateful. And also to you, uh, Atta Ahin, Vice President of Coniwas, uh, Coalition in uh, Water and Sanitation. We're grateful for your time this morning. And thank you also to uh, Philip Katriku and um, Daniel Teteoklu for going out there with me into the into the thicket of those two slums to bring you that story